talk about electrons. So first and foremost, what is the average energy or let's say the mean energy for an electron beam? So this is a fairly straightforward equation. So we have uh, E naught is equal to 2.33 times the R50. And remember that is in CM. So that will be dependent on the energy. And of course, that range you have for your electron beam. But now this EZ, what we mean by that is the energy at depth Z. And so this is closely related to what we just discovered. We take the mean energy and then multiply that by one minus the depth that we want and the practical range. So that will give you that energy at whatever depth you are considering. And this has clinical implications too. But to move on, how do we find a cutout factor? So this is very important, something we do maybe not quite daily in our clinical practice, but very, very often. So it's just imperative. You know how to do this, how they work, and how to calculate them. So you want the dose with the cutout. So typically you put solid water, you can use MOSFETs, you can use diodes, you heck, you can even use film if you wanted, gaffchromic film. And because this is a relative output measurement, so you want to find what dose is with that cutout, specifically what you're using. Of course, it's going to be a different shape. It's going to be a shape of a, a breast boost, of a skin lesion on the face, whatever it may be. So dose with the cutout to the dose without the cutout. Without cut. And so that you're just going to use your typical 10 by 10 output filter, your cutout there. And so normally this is done at 100 cm SSD. You're going to use a 10 by 10 field size. And again, you can use a diode, you can use an ion chamber, but remember that it has to be has to Dmax because we don't want our readings affected by that buildup region. So the cutoffs have a rapid dose fall off uh, with the increase of SSD. And because the cutouts, they're going to have a different divergence leading to a decreased output. That's why they are absolutely necessary when you're doing these. A lot of factors may be near one, so it doesn't make a big difference. Some of them aren't. They can be as low as 0.8 or lower. So it's important to always do a cutout factor just to verify, document it, and verify that within the treatment planning system as well. Now, how does electron surface dose vary with the field size and how or why? So I'm going to address this by talking about relative. So there's a big difference. And when you're in your exam, you need to understand the difference between relative percent depth doses and absolute. So when we're talking about relatively, the electron surface dose, as that decreases, well, it will decrease, I should say, when the field size increases. And that's because the dose clouds, the dose bulges at the depth. Also, just interestingly enough, good relationships to know that when you increase the field size, the D max will increase. That makes pretty good sense when you think about it. And then also let's look at our surface dose. That will increase with increasing energy a relationship very important, not only to know clinically, but this is also different than photons. So be sure you get them straight in your head when you're being examined. This is a question that certainly could come up and be sure you understand them and why. If you have any questions, please comment below. Thank you for watching. Happy studying.